I'm Vincor Weather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Thursday, February 8th. High pressure is taking control of our weather today following the messy day on Wednesday. We had quite a bit of ice in the morning on Wednesday and then heavy rain in the afternoon. Skies cleared overnight. Temperatures dropped way down into the 20s. Uh, today will be a cold and windy day. Not too bad, however, for a parade in Philadelphia for this time of the year. There will be plenty of sunshine and it will be dry. But again, cold and breezy. I remember the parade for the Phillies about 10 years ago. That turned out to be a spectacular day, but of course that was late October. Right now we're in the heart of winter, so you really can't complain. Again, cold and windy, but dry with some sunshine today in Philadelphia and throughout the Mid-Atlantic region. It'll turn milder on Friday, although there will be plenty of clouds around tomorrow. And then quite mild this weekend, but it'll turn wet. Rain looks like it'll move into the I-95 corridor. Saturday afternoon, continue Saturday night and into the day on Sunday. Really all in all, over the next week or two, there's no signs of extreme cold. We'll take a look at a couple of things here. The Madden-Julian oscillation, as well as the stratospheric warming event that is currently unfolding. Both of these hold out some promise for some colder air to move back into the central and, U and eastern U.S. later in the month of February going into the month of March. But again, the next week or two look relatively benign in terms of extreme cold for this part of the nation. First of all, the Madden-Julian Oscillation is uh, uh, something that tracks a tropical disturbance that propagates around the world. And depending on what phase the MJO is in, uh, often dictates to particular temperature and precipitation patterns. This time of the year, if the MJO moves into what we call phase 8, and then phase 1, and then phase 2, that typically represents colder than normal temperature patterns in the central and eastern U.S. The uh, black line here represents the current observations of MJO up until this point right here, and then the green is the forecast for the MJO movement over the next couple of weeks. This is from the European a computer forecast model. Notice here the MJO, according to the European model, is forecast to go right through phase 7 and then into phase 8 on its way back around again into phase 1 and 2. And again, these particular phases right in here typically are correlated with colder than normal conditions in the central and eastern U.S. So this uh, bodes well for the possibility of some colder air moving back into the eastern half of the nation later in the month of February. Well, in addition to the MJO, the Madden-Julian Oscillation, which again is a tropical disturbance, one of the things meteorologists like to look at during the winter time, uh, the temperatures over the stratosphere, in the stratosphere, the very highest levels of the atmosphere, over the pole especially, uh, typically there's a, a polar vortex or a, a low pressure area sitting over the pole uh, with um, cold conditions there, but every once in a while there's a reversal and temperatures really warm up in the upper part of the atmosphere, the stratosphere. We're talking about 10 millibar level, for example. And oftentimes, if the stratosphere warms up uh, uh, over the poles or on this side of the North Pole, that sets off a chain of events that can lead to cold air outbreaks from northern Canada into the middle latitudes, in this case, uh, oftentimes into the central and eastern U.S. Indeed, stratospheric warming is taking place right now. This particular loop of maps are the uh, temperature anomalies at 10 millibars, way up in the atmosphere, with the northern latitudes way up here, the equator uh, right down in this region. The red here, and orange and yellows, represents warming, and this goes back about 30 days on a daily basis. And notice in the last several days here, we have quite a bit of warming right here over the northern latitudes. Again, this is indicative of a stratospheric warming event that is unfolding right now. And this could uh, also, like the MJO going into phases 8, 1, and 2, this could lead to some cold air outbreaks into the central and eastern U.S. later in the month of February going into March. Well, here's another way to look at this unfolding stratospheric warming event. This is the current look at the temperatures over the, uh, uh, over the North Pole, which is centered right in this region right here. This is a kind of a top-down view 
of the northern hemisphere with the North Pole right here, the U.S. down in this region right now. Again, this is the current look at the temperature pattern at 10 millibars, the stratospheric level here. Uh, notice some warming here. On the other side of the pole, low pressure area or lower uh, temperatures uh, just on the, uh, the uh, Asian side of the North Pole here. But take a look at what happens 10 days from now. And here we go. This is a 10-day forecast from the GFS model for the stratospheric temperatures. A big, big warming on this side, the North American side of the North Pole here. So it goes from this right now to this in about a week to 10 days or so. This is a major stratospheric warming event. Recent history has uh, featured some stratospheric warming events of this magnitude and and, and several occasions, not all occasions, several occasions that led to colder air outbreaks for the central and eastern U.S. Perhaps a couple of weeks after the initial warming of the stratosphere. Sometimes it takes a few weeks for this to actually unfold in, uh, uh, from the beginning of the warming over the polar region to the displacement of the colder air masses into the middle latitude. So again, this is something we'll watch over the next several days, a big stratospheric warming event uh, unfolding. Uh, over the next week to 10 days, we'll see the stratospheric warming push the polar vortex onto this side of the North Pole, the North American side of the North Pole, in, again, a week to 10 days or so. And this, combined with that MJO, sends some signals that there could be a colder pattern into the central and eastern U.S. later in the month of February going into the month of March. So just something we'll monitor over the next couple of weeks for the next few days, much milder this weekend with rain coming Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, into the day on Sunday, and no extreme cold over the next couple of weeks, but we'll continue to monitor these longer-term signals, the MJO and stratospheric warming, for the latter part of February going into March. That's it for now. For EventCoreWeather.com, I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.